Hey there, Conquistadors. We are Table at Gaming, and we are here to go over the 100 Kingdoms army list again. After playing a few games of the Stoneface King, we've learned a few things about 100 Kingdoms, and we're going to revisit what we previously went over on 100 Kingdoms. There's obviously been list changes, point changes, rule changes since the last time, and we think with a lot more recent context that we'll have new, interesting, thermonuclear hot takes for you. Well, hopefully they're colder takes because this is armies that we actually have experience with now. And now, another reason why we're doing this is because also the last time we did it was uh, over a year ago at this point. Yeah. So there have been some changes to the game, the army list, and the general meta. I don't... Maybe... Is, it's a different landscape overall. So certain things that were true when we first made the uh, army list review, and we called it an army list review back then, Correct. not yes. army list hot takes, because we were taking ourselves seriously, but then we realized, no, we can't do that. <laughs> Anyways, yes, hopefully we're going to have some refreshing new eyes, and hopefully it's going to be really funny to compare our new video to our old video. Hopefully we don't repeat ourselves too much, because I know for the most part certain things haven't changed yes but it's also going to be really funny because we've both forgotten what we have said for us to just like reiterate like things that we're excited about like it's not going to happen because like we remember it but like you got so hype about gilded legion and i feel like you might just do that again i uh, yes but maybe you'll control yourself and be like I... oh, i've already said it all before anyways Correct. All right, we're going to jump right into it with the army rules for the 100 Kingdoms. First is adaptability to adversity. This is their choice. They, they get one of two options. Veterans, you pay extra points for your officer. You have to have an officer to gain any benefit from this. And you can choose to have plus one clash or plus one resolve. Uh, sorry, volley. Yeah. It's cool. Workhorse. Like, you can't really go wrong with it unless you're taking things that don't have officers. Yes. The problem is, is it can make the investment pretty heavy. Because, like, drilled... Sorry, drill masters are, like, 20 points. Yes. If you want to make your unit veteran, you have to pay 40 points for it. Yes. Yeah. That and, is really steep. And it is a limit up to four during list building. So, you got to... There are certain mm. units that are better targets. So... Well, uh, I don't think there's any units that have, like, a base of four. That can true. also be veterans. Yeah. Um, just calling out because it's part of the rules. But, fair, um, fair. I, it, this is a rule that uh, when you apply it to the right units, it, it makes it makes sense. But you can you got to watch out about overspending. Um, and it also incentivizes large blocks of units, Such since it's a one-time cost. You obviously get more of this if you run it in a six-stand uh, unit instead of a msu of three um the one difference is i think when we looked at this last time we were all very hype on giant giant stacks of six or, or seven guys yep and in general that's not what is winning uh competitive events uh at, also at this at, at the point of the previous video and i'm yeah. not sure how much we do want to compare to previous videos but just as a point of order yeah. um this also used to give plus one resolve Yes. So it was a little better, yeah. but it also made you pay extra for standard bearers. Yes, which yeah, as which well. Is terrible. Yes, and uh, I I was just looking something up. Militia paid ten points base for errant of the order of the shield and bringing you from clash two to clash three on militia for, for total, only for ten extra points for ten extra points. That, seems that feels like a good return on investment. We're now going to talk about relentless drill yes. because I think that it's a good segue. You were just talking about big blocks. Yes. And now let's talk about relentless drill. Why don't you tell us what that does? So what the um, what relentless drill does is gives all units that don't have uh, support it gets support two, so they're getting extra attacks if they're not engaged, or if they already have a support value, it increases it by one. So this is very good for Porcupine lists, where you're running uh, units that like Guild of Legions that have a high support. So you want. I think the work. official term is Hedgehog. Hedgehog. List. Please uh, be respectful to the content creators uh, who uh, talk about these things more than us. Uh, content creators and I, skilled players. Skilled players. Okay, we'll both go with of, this. Both of which, we are half of one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so Reliance Drill is a good way to stack up support. Obviously, support is more interesting the larger it gets because that way, if something gets involved in the front, you're going to be putting out a disproportionate amount of attacks back into them where unless they also have a high support value, 
they're only their front ranks are going to be doing attacks. So this is a way to make a deep but not great unit um, a lot more deadly than it looks. So this is a way of doubling down on that, um, which is good uh, if you want to run that. But like, I don't see this get run a lot because when we get later to uh, in it, um, a lot of people play Hundred Kings for Cavalist, and this obviously has very little application there. Uh, it has zero application. Yes. But yeah, it's just interesting that you said the veterans incentivizes large units, but I feel like Relentless this is Drill better. is the one that Correct. incentivizes the large units. But maybe both of them incentivize long units. I see your argument yeah. that the front loading of the cost makes you want to take more. Because you get it's it's you get more value because you get more stands of it. But I don't yeah. think that's true. Depends. Necessarily. Like okay. You 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 have your Steel Legion, you've paid mm -hmm. forty points to get the officer and give them veteran. Yeah. You bring six stands of them, it's a three hundred point unit. Mm -hmm. You've got in three extra clash four attacks. Mm -hmm. Like, is three extra clash four attacks worth like investing so much in one unit? Like, do you not think that the twenty points alone is worth the plus one clash on the existing um what is it? 19 attacks right wait so is You're, it a plus one only to the command stand plus plus one well, clash the, to the the plus stand? one clash is to the entire unit oh so i, I but so if you entirely, are taking a yeah. six man unit so you are only getting an extra three attacks and those those stands cost like 50 points a piece i i think that i think basically my point is yeah i don't think veterans encourages larger blocks because you don't gain enough from going larger to be worth like the okay. extra like the diminishing returns of adding extra stands is so small that it feels like you're just getting you're just doubling down on the um diminishing returns you paid extra at the beginning and now you're paying even more extra to try to squeak extra value out of it but i don't think you're getting a proportionate amount of value so I think a good example, and we'd have to run the math on this, is if we take something like the Militia, which do have support base, so they're going to get mm -hmm. two attacks. I think they're support two. Yeah. Um, so the question is, do you get more hits from going um, support two to support three from a Lotus Drill, or do you get more hits if your, uh, wep your Clash two becomes Clash three? If you're hitting 50% of the time, or you get an extra attack that you're only hitting, um, what, a third of the time? I did the math when I was... Uh... And relentless works. We we're getting bogged down in the weeds on these one things. We'll move on, and this is yeah. more unit specific conversation. Correct. So, yeah. Dynastic alliances. You get two warlords. Speaking of warlords, let's talk about supremacy abilities. If my computer can handle scrolling down a PDF, I wonder if this is showing up choppy in the video. Comment below. <laughs> Imperial officer. If yeah. you've been keeping up with the Crucible of Will Stoneface campaign series of videos that we've been releasing, you'll realize, or know, you'll remember, you'll you'll know that I have forgotten this ability pretty much every <laughs> single time. You had... uh, I remembered it part of the way through Scenario 3 and got I... use out of it on two units, and then I promptly forgot it for like the, the, the next unit in the next round. If it makes you feel better, the second mission is First Blood, and you don't even have an Imperial Guard there. That's so. true. That's or true. Officer, so yeah. I've only missed it on two, like, 1.75 missions. <laughs> Anyways, during your reinforcement phase, you can take pick two infantry regiments that, like, are in your stack, so yeah. that have already, like, you've at least rolled for reinforcements. They gain Vanguard, which gives them an extra move. It always works, whether they're on the battlefield or not. So, like, turn one, you have, like, three mercenary crossbowmen units coming in even if your Imperial officer is in with Steel Legion, you can yeah. say, these two mercenary crossbowmen, they get Vanguard when I draw when I draw the card and choose to activate them. Yep. That's a triple move up the board with a banner that's gonna get you 16 inches, five, five, five plus one, yeah, 16 yep. inches. Give you a nice solid shooting phase it, uh, near near like the important points of the board you don't want to go too far forward remember but yeah. gets you gets you up there where you can use that 18 inch range later in the game it'll take your heavies and it'll let them do things like come on pretty well from like the edges like they can do a big wheel with their first march and then kind of march at an angle onto the battlefield and get to a good position pretty good ability 
It's good. The two things to, to note is one is it's not just your warbands, everyone in the army who is, and this is a second point, infantry. So this incentivizes running with your base infantry list. It will not help vanguard your, your cav units. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're running in infantry, this uh, this is a nice way to send them full, full send all the way up the board if needed. Yep. And then we have Noble Lord. You want to talk about speed of horse? This is the opposite, which is it helps the other way, which is uh, while this character stand is on the battlefield, all knight regiments gain plus one impact, which is when we get to the unit review, this is uh, a lot of the knights and cav units have high impact, so this is doubling down on that. And they get to re-roll failed hit rolls of uh, six when resolving impact attacks. So this means you're going to get more impact hits and your impact hits are going to be more likely to hit because if you roll six and fail, you get to re-roll that hopefully into something that hits. Um, it's always also considered to be active, um, so you don't have to have them on the table or whatever. No, you do. Um, well, this oh. character stand is on the battlefield. Oh, sorry. It starts with that and then yeah. ends with its own, because it's a pat. If it doesn't yeah. say it's always active, then you have you to have specifically to use, use it yeah. once per game. Um, so this is good if you run a huge cav list and you want to get those um, really good impact hits and you want to double down on that, and especially some of the units that people like most. Um, some of the cav units are very... Uh, impact so, heavy. It's specific to household knights as well. Oh, it is. Yes, oh. it is specifically household knights. So it does not buff orders cavalry, mounted squires. I guess those are the only other cavalry units. Oh, I misread that. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it's yeah. household knights. Well, you yeah, yeah as yeah. you said it, you said knights. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, that one is if you want to bring a bunch of household knights specifically, it's good. Yeah. Granted. You only really need to bring one unit of household knights, one big unit of household knights, and you can get a lot of value out of that between yeah. the reroll sixes and the plus one impact rules. This isn't something that you have to build an army around, especially no. because you get two warlord traits. That, this... You can bring the infantry buffing trait and the cavalry buffing trait, or sorry, the household knights buffing trait. Yes. And you can have an imperial officer leading a bunch of infantry, and then you can have your mounted noble lord in his Death Star, and you're not like losing value by Correct. not taking a million household knight units which is what's which is one thing that's nice it's like in other armies you have there's like an opportunity cost like to get this i'm giving up that and here you can kind of have your cake and eat it too by yep. picking the best of both worlds and kind of buffing everything you're running yep um best of men i'll take this one while you're on the battlefield friendly regiments within eight inches of the character stand reroll unmodified hit rolls of six when making defense rolls yeah. and clash rolls. So gives you just a little bit more consistency, I guess. Yep. Give, makes you a little bit more likely to hit, a little bit more likely to defend. And it really hurts enemies that like to use um, deadly blades or deadly shots. The one that on Oh, sixes, the one that sixes you get extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, uh, it it gives you a chance to say, no, actually, you don't do that. You don't do that really scary thing. Yeah. Is it something that, is it good enough to take as one of your two traits? I think yes, when you're doing like hedgehog lists. Yes. Which we'll talk more about when we talk about like the units that go into hedgehog lists. I don't think if you're running a non-hedgehog list, like unless you're specifically running that archetype, I don't think that you bring best of men. I agree, and I think there's a few things to note here, which is you have to be within eight inches the, uh, of the character stand, so at least someone has to, not fully within, but within eight. So you do need to kind of play these infantry and groups together. Um, so yeah. you just, like, you have to work to get value out of it, and like you said, unless you have a few targets that are always going to be within that eight-inch bubble, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So, like, yeah. the archetype that it's made for, the uh, hedgehog uh, porcupine list, Hedgehog. Hedgehog list. You had it right. <laughs> okay. Um, is where we see the most value. Everywhere else, I feel like you get more value out of um, one or the other. Like, even the Imperial Officer, I think, if you're running on just a few things of infantry, you probably would pay out more in the long term. Yep. The First Blessing. Why don't you get that one? That is the Mounted Priori Commander or the Order of the Sword Priori Commander. Once per battle, when the Supremacy phase is, uh, is activated... Every regiment in this priori commander's warband gains a blessed special rule. Uh, regiments that already have this blessed special rule either gain plus one to their attack characteristic or harden plus one special rule. So 
Um, Blessed is interesting because it's a way that uh, you can get more consistency by using it to um, reroll um, attacks or defenses. And if they already have it, so you wouldn't get value from using the Supremacy, they, they get to choose another ability that's really good, such as if you're already having Bless, getting plus one attack just means you're having an attack that most likely will hit when you utilize the base bust. Yep. And the the unit that already has Bless that this benefits because it only benefits units in the Priority Warband. Commander's Warband. Yep. So it can only be the Order's unit. So only Ash and Dawn intrinsically come with Bless. Correct. So they are the ones that are getting to choose. And I actually don't know if like what people are going for with this one if they go plus one attack or hardened or if it depends on the situation I'm, i feel I, it has to depend on the si so like hardened is good if you want them to just like bless one thing that's good about that role is this flexible this feels like you can use it to do what you want the um the unit ashendon is already pretty tough i know they recently right. have some but it's like if you're holding an objective where you need them to last around, throwing hard in one um, is going to make it even better, right? Or more likely. If you need to, to attack to get something off the table, you can use that. So even if one, let's say hard in, for instance, is more important, the fact that the uh, you have an option is always good because there will be corner cases where that's better, even though it's the 10%, not the 90 Comment below if 99% of the time you only use the plus one attack. Because yeah. I have a suspicion that that's, that's what people that's go the one, for. Yeah. But I could be wrong. That's my hot take. All right, next is the Theist Priest. My favorite character, which I'll talk more about later. Once per battle, he can say, hey, devout bros, you all get all the spells that I cast. <laughs> just for fun. Just, just, just for fun. With the added caveat that when he does it, they you there's this certain spell that like lets you do an automatic like a, an instant dual action. You don't get to have your entire army just suddenly duel. <laughs> One could hope on a spell cast, but they get all the other buffs. So we'll talk about the spells. There are a couple of spells that can make really gnarly combos, but I do think that this is mostly just like a meme. I, I I don't think that you take this this supremacy ability like as a serious contender. I don't think so. But it is really good fun. And sometimes fun is good, right? Sometimes yeah. you gotta take the, the the less optimal but more fun thing. Yeah. Um, with that, do you want me to run through yeah. that chapter? Yeah. Hit mage? me up with that chapter mageness. So I think this is kind of a cool one, which is uh, depending on the army you're playing, uh, especially with Sorcerer Kings and other more spell forward armies out there, this might be interesting, which is when enemy spellcasters select a friendly regiment as the target of their spellcasting action, they count as being affected by enemy interference, which makes it harder for them to cast spells. So this is nice that it gives your entire army a little blanket defense against spells, and spells yep. can sometimes get pretty nasty, so that's good. Uh, and there's not like a range or area effect, it's all of everyone. Um, in addition, when this character stand performs a spell casting action, if the attempting a cast with a spe uh, range of self, it is instead range of eight inches. Uh, so this lets you get spells that were traditionally only you onto other targets. Um, and with that, I don't know if it makes sense because the last two are spells, if we should just jump down spells and kind of like tie these threads together. Uh, or should we come back to it? Um, and I think talk we just it? come back to it. Okay, I think, let's do that. Yeah. I so think, when we get to spells, we'll talk about where this could be interesting. Yes. But uh, I do think Chapter Mage has a little bit more going on it as opposed to Theus Priest. And I think especially if you're playing in metas or worried about more spell cast friendly, like I know Dweg sometimes is a very hard matchup with spells, that the Chapter Mage just has a little bit more going on. Yeah. So the first character we're going to talk about, like the, the stats and abilities of, besides the supremacy ability, the Imperial Officer, 90 points, he's yeah. cheap and cheerful, he's like the support guy, you take him because he gives you forward force, you take him because of the Vanguard ability, you take him because Mercenary Crossbowmen are really good, and you take him because Gilded Legion are very good. He has the ability to pick up to two battlefield or drills. Yes. You can use both of them. They, like, confer onto the unit. He's got, um, like, looking at them, the Bastion and Double Time are, like, the good ones. Yes. You can make an Archer build with Fire in Advance and Murderous Volley. I think Fire in Advance and Bastion would be, like, the better Archer pick, maybe? Probably, yeah. But I also don't think that you're taking him to do that. No. Like, 
he could go in with the Hunter Cadre or the Imperial Ranger Corps, and I think that is fine, but I don't think that those units are overall great. Yes. Mercenary Crossbowmen are also fine for him to go in, but I think that he really shines when you're bringing him in with Gilded Legion or Steel Legion. I was just going to say. More fun, less powerful choice. And I'll then, talk more about Steel Legion later. Yeah, because I feel like the benefit of Merc Crossbow... So he has a really good warband. I think that's the, like the huge takeaway. You're probably going to be taking Merc Crossbows anyway, which are just good without any support because they're very point efficient. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to stick them in one of the more interesting uh, Gil Legion or Steel Legion, depending which way you're going. And then you get the better benefit of the drills and as well as a nice attachment. So yeah, I think that's how you do it. I, range builds are possible. I don't think you want to get stuck in that. Yep. Noble Lord is more of like your fighty choice. He's yep. not super fighty. But he does get to pick two free buffs, which range from, like, Cleave and Flurry to increasing attacks and Clash. Tenacious is also cool. Actually, it, if the character stand alone gets Tenacious, then I think it only triggers during duels, which is much less interesting of a choice. Yeah. If that Tenacious can trigger for his whole regiment... That is maybe pretty good. But also, this is the foot version as well. So this is not like noble knights. Yeah. Or household knights getting tenacious, if that is how it works. Comment below if you know the answer to that. Uh, yeah, I like you said, um, I don't think any of the characters are like murderers, like in Nords or in some uh, Dwag or something like that. So like Noble Lord being your better combat character is means it's slightly better it's not gonna like straight up like kill huge other things i don't think you can make like a dual build where Correct. it's going to kill any character like guaranteed and i don't think you're gonna get like a regiment killer build this is not a hero hammer correct army. this is to adding exactly i think that's the right way to put it um this warband's fine uh there's nothing really bad about it, but there's nothing exciting i think when you go most people go for noble lords they want the cav version or the mounted version to yeah cav. so i feel like this is something that kind of gets glass over it's fine if you want these buffs, you're probably going to get the mounted one. In a Hedgehog build, you're going to take one of these guys to get Mainstay Household Guard. Yes, that's the only thing that's really interesting on this guy versus other stuff. Because everything else you can get in other Warbands, I think, in better capacity. Yep. You want to talk about... I feel like I did the first two characters. I kind yeah, of went that's rogue. Fine. So you can um, go ahead and talk about the Noble Lord. Uh, mount mounted. The, the Mounted Noble Lord has been the mounted, the first mounted character in this in this army and the one that a lot of people gravitate the to. The only. You're right. Yeah, the only. Yeah. Uh, and the oh, nope. Priority commander. I was just going to say there's Ignore me. One. I'm an idiot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is what you take when you want to uh, run big blocks of household guards. There's now mounted squires that are available so you can like round out the... Um, the warband um, as stated you can take this as one of your two warlords so that you can get that bonus to impact and impact uh, bonus to number of impacts as well as the rerolls and then put them with a lot of blocks of household guard and then you can just run through and be your best cav self um, he really helps in my opinion the household guard because he provides some the with his knights? sorry yeah he you said guard. Those are the infantry. I misspoke. The this is the mounted guy. Yes. Yep. The household knights, he provides some value because with his upgrades that he can get, because he gets to take uh, some of the special rules, just like the non-mounted version. Yeah, you he can only gets him, one he doesn't get, as opposed yeah. to the two that the unmounted version gets. So you have to pick between cleave or flurry. I was just going to say, the, those are the two that you would do. And I feel like in this, um, that cleave is good because uh, one thing with the household knights as they sometimes get stuck and i know cleave one isn't gonna like for you know kill through everything but it does add a little bit with five attacks clash three base yeah. like that's pretty good the yeah. old dual list i think does have a valid use in that you've got three impact hits that's true so like what, making yeah. those more like with some of the other special rules that he can get you can, I believe, get a Clash 5 re-rolling 6s. So, like, almost oh, a 100% hit rate. It's only three impact hits, but they are brutal, too. And that's Which is not than insignificant, yeah. especially when that upgrade that I'm talking about also gives you terrifying. So then the, that that so, actually is a really good archetype. To, and then, yeah. like, he's not going to charge by himself. He's coming with a bunch of boys. Yeah, he uh, alone yeah. with his impact hits, you could probably, depending on what you're charging, you could probably rack up. 
three to five damage pretty consistently with him. Yeah, with, if you run a big just block, you can. Yeah, 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 I agree with that. So I think this is a more popular one, and it's what you get if you want to run a bunch of horsies. Yep. Mounted Priori Commander. This is the first and currently only orders character. So if you want to go for yep. an orders theme, that's what you pick. You the, you can pick between two options. There is the... Wait. Okay, that's what I thought. Yes. It's Quicksilver Strike. Wow. You can choose between the Order of the Crimson Tower and the Order of the Sealed Temple. They get slightly different special rules depending on which one you pick. The... Crimson Tower is the shock cavalry one. That is the yeah. one where you're like, I'm just going to kill you with brutal impact and terrifying. The Order of the Sealed Temple is a little trickier. He gets more impact, but they don't get brutal too. And yeah. he gets Quicksilver Strike, so he's good at, good in duels. Uh, six attacks and Clash 4 base is pretty good in duels. It's high, yep. But I'm not sure. Like, he can't buy items. Yes, and, so... and he also has no evasion, so the thing is, is a lot of characters have, can get access to, like, cleave two or something, and then you're kind of... Yeah, like if well, you're sub... but you're, he's defense four, so... Defense four, yes, true, but there's that uh, city-state weapon that gives you, uh, what's it called, cleave four or five, yeah, or whatever this... wild number it is, yeah. but, so, I just call it out as there's no backstop if you're going against something there, so, like, it is good, it's probably the best character at duels in this army, but it doesn't... To your previous point, none of these characters I want to be getting in any serious duel with. So even though this is True. the best, it is the best of a very small mountain. And the final thing to note on these guys is that the, which one you pick decides your mainstay choice. So Correct. the Order of the Sealed Temple Priori Commander takes Sealed Temple as mainstay. Yeah. Crimson Temple Tower, guess what? They take Crimson Tower as mainstay. So yep. that's that's kind of the deciding factor there. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, even though he's cool, I think you take him for the warband, right? You take him to run the, the, the interesting uh, order units. Yeah. We skipped the Order of the Sword Priority Commander because we don't talk about unreleased units. I, I guess I didn't give the spiel on what our Hot Takes videos were at the beginning, but yeah, if you're tuning in now, you probably already know. You've seen one or two, and if you haven't, just go watch one of those and you'll get the whole spiel. But we can just briefly say, we don't, uh, because rules change a lot between the what is in the PDF and what is finally released, like there's hoplites and a few things coming out at the time of this video that Reese and others have said there's going to be rule changes from PDF. We don't like speculating on things until they're out because yeah. the rules are more solid. So it's a thing, but we're not covering. Let's move on. Yeah. Tell me about the Theist Priest. Okay. Theist Priest. Um... First off, I'm going to say, I actually like this model a lot. I, I always call it one or two models. I really like the uh, the way it has, like, the faceless, you know, like the... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's uh, got, like, a knight's helmet almost. Correct. Like, almost like triangle head or, or pyramid head from Silent Hill, where it's, oh, it's very faceless. And just yeah. like, and I think that's a, a an interesting design aesthetic that I did not expect when I first heard about this. So, big ups on the model. You hear Priest, you think, like, he does have the robes, but yeah. you think, like... Like a bishop. Like, exactly. Like That's a what I thought priest. of. And when like, he came out, it was... A hat, a staff. No, this guy's got a sword. Ex which... And a gauntleted, clawed hand. And, like, the, the it's faceless, but it has, like, one eye hole. It's pretty cool model. That's why I... So I want to call that out, because I think it has better than uh, items. So, um, very basic character model, 100 points. Uh, special rules is cleave, one, fine. Uh, Devout, which is the item that his uh, Supremacy uh, deals with. Fearless and Priest 6, which is a pretty pretty good uh, Priest Not value. Dwegum good. Not not Dwegum good, but I think 6 They're is high. They're all base 7. Yeah. Jeez. Um, and so they got a, a the, list of spells, which we'll cover later, so I don't want to index yes. on the cool ones there. I just want to point out the fact that they have Cleave 1 base means that they, despite the Clash 2, like they, they, they bring something... They a little better. Than, yeah. Yep. None of the other characters come with cleave base. You have yep. to buy upgrades or take one of the free upgrades to get any cleave on your characters. So the fact that he comes with it base means that he he provides something. But his warband is a little bit of a letdown. His warband is, and I just will call it for attack stats. Four attacks is good. Clash two, not good. Four attacks is average. So, sorry, yeah, yeah, okay, yes. Clash Four two wound is, is fine. bad. <laughs> uh, the thing that I think kind of hurts... Uh, him for defense where he sits. Defense 2 is bad. Uh, 
but resolve two. Resolve two is actually really low for a uh, a character stand. Yeah, because you're joining a you're character jo a unit and you're not conferring a buff because every unit in the game, I'm pretty sure, is resolve two or better. Natively. Correct, exactly. So when you're talking about other things like the order uh, uh, items, they're like fours and threes and stuff. So the thing that's hard is. Uh, these priests ain't bringing much in the resolve stand with anyone. What it brings is spells, and um, let's talk about yeah, those spells. That's, that's I'm, the next I'm important thing. Oh well, do you want to? Should we scrolling. talk about the chapter mage real quick? First? No, we're going to talk about the theist priest because okay. we just looked at him. He's got a list of spells. We're yes, going to talk about this. what those do. Jeez, I'm crying. <laughs> Divine Sanction. This is the one that you cast when you take him as the warlord. This is yep. the funny one. This is the one where he gets to duel, so you cast a spell, you duel. It also buffs him up. Cleave plus one, so he goes up to cleave two. Deadly blades and quicksilver strikes, so that duel, he's striking first. Yes. He's still only clash two, though, so with all those rules, he's... Du uh, Deadly blades are one where ones cost double? Yes. So he no, is uh, sixes. Okay, so you're hoping on the enemy defense. So you're hoping you get something, and they roll very bad, so they spike out. Right, because like duel often does not involve inspire. Yes. So you are hitting one third of the time with four attacks. Yep. Oh. <laughs> but the cleave too does mean if they're not running, if they don't have like evasion or something, like your attacks are getting through, and deadly blades makes up for it. But, like, you can only really expect, like, one to two hits. That's what even. I was going to say. And if you, like, hit the lotto and you get a stay roll six to defend, right? Yeah. So You're I, not actually winning duels with this. This is literally only to combo with the Spirit Shine's Supremacy ability where, okay, this guy alone getting Cleave plus one and Deadly Blades, math isn't math in for it. You give nine stands of Militia, three units, nine stands each, who are all devoted, they all have cleave one now. Yeah. They're veterans, so they're clash three. They're already higher than the Theus Priest. And they all have deadly blades, and they're making, like, 20 attacks from the unit. I don't actually know how many attacks, but, like, a way more attacks, and they're more accurate. And they they those will benefit from Inspire in a way Correct. that the yeah, duel yeah, yeah. won't. The, yeah. So you're actually probably hitting on fours. So look at that. Look, you, we find a little combo. Yes. So tell me about Fervor. Uh, Fervor is 12 inch, 3 scaling. Target friendly unit use, loses its broken status as if it had to use a rally action. Target regiment does not count as, as having been activated as a result of the spell. So um, gets rid of broken. I mean, that's fine. There are other ways to do it. I mean, if you have nothing else better to do, it's good. Because broken doesn't score, can't inspire, but like, there's other ways to do this. Yeah, if you have a ton of broken regiments on the field, uh, it can be funny with the, the spirit shines where you're just you like, oh, my back. entire army's unbroken. But I feel like, just no, like, let's not. play that world. So I'm in combat across my entire army. So I at least have two units. Let's say two units are there. I'm already so far on the back foot. That yeah. Just becoming yeah. unbroken ain't going to get me there. Um, so it's fine. I don't think it's a bad thing, but it's not, it's not something you would take this character for. It's another tool in your toolbox yep heavenly blessing you can give a target infantry unit blessed this kind of works with spirit shines it can give you one turn where you're most likely going to use it very defensively yes. i feel or if you're in a position like one unit might use it offensively that's what i was gonna say it feels like you you use it and then you just make a bunch and there's probably like one who's in attack and everyone else you're like please stay alive another yeah. turn it's also generally like, it does feel like it's a good ability just to cast without considering the yeah. spirit shines. Like, oh, let Blessed me give the unit bad. that I'm in. Yeah, Blessed yeah. is never bad unless you're shoot, uh, it's a heavy volley army. Because Correct. you can't you bless can't against volley. that. Yeah, that's... And you can't bless your own volley hits. So, that's fine. Holy Fire, tell Holy us Holy Fire, it. uh, it's a standard damage spell, 10 inches, inflicts two hits per success on enemy, uh, target enemy regiment. Um, damage spells are always good because it's a range attack that also causes them, uh, resolve damage, so it's good. Um, yeah, once yeah. again, another uh, tool in your toolbox. I wouldn't take this guy just to be doing this every turn. Yep. And then finally, Saint's Favor, plus one to defense or evasion until end of round. A decent spell to have. Especially, like, this and Heavenly Blessing are both pretty good in that you can cast them and then 
on the unit you're in and then activate chain activate yes into the unit that you're in i think the official the unofficial community term for it is retinue rules okay or retinue activation i think that no retinue is what they used to have man there's some word that people use well comment below let me know i've yeah. i've seen it used by some people but not in an official capacity Yep, and the one thing I'll say on Saints' uh, favor is I think Heavenly Bless probably in most cases is better. Like, you know what I mean? Rerolling sixes or rerolling from Blessed for defensive is probably better. Against than... one attack in a round versus having plus one defense for the entire round. So it depends on how much of a target you are. Yeah. Chapter Mage, they have built in Barrage, they have Wizard. That's what you're doing with them. They pick one school, and each school has two spells associated with it, and they have two base spells. Which are pretty decent. Oh, one thing we didn't talk about with the Theus Priest is they only have access to Militia in their Warband. Yeah. They have an unreleased unit in their Warband called the Sicarii. Once those come out, I'm loving life. Until then, like, it's it's very much a meme because Militia are, aren't anything. No. Chapter Mages, though, they can get Mercenary Crossbowmen. Which... And when you take a ranged caster with a ranged attack and put them in a ranged unit... That's pretty good. They also get men at arms, but I think that you're going to bring the mercenary yeah, crossbowman because yeah, yeah. you don't want her in combat. So let me scroll back down to those spells and we'll go over those real quick. Oh geez. Okay. Yep. All right. So I'm going to start with the two. We'll each pick a school or go through a school. Yes. They're not arranged by schools, which is awesome. But we can figure them out. The two schoolless ones, the ones that you always get, elemental vortex. Enemy spellcasters count as having rolled two less successes on target regiment until end of the round. So you pick one of your regiments within 12 inches and you say you are going to be harder to cast against. With the Warlord, the supremacy ability, that seems like it becomes pretty powerful, right? Yep. Like, not only do they count as having two less successes, they also have their attunement re reduced by one so that it's harder for to get any of those successes it's less effective against people who rely on buffing themselves but if they're targeting your regiments actually you don't have to target a friendly unit so you can actually target your i just realized this live yeah. you're watching this live you target an enemy unit and it becomes harder to buff them because they need more successes C combo with that with a scaling spell on a big unit, and you can yeah. really deny a lot of value to your opponent. A yeah, lot it would be really aw awkward for like a heal, like you know what I mean? Make yeah, it hard to heal and that kind of stuff. Because it, yeah, yep. The elemental missile pick a regiment within twelve inches, and they take three hits with no special rules. You don't even have to roll dice for this. Yep, it can't get any better or worse. You just you take three hits. It can be good at clearing out some chaff like some low defense guys yeah, yeah, yeah. but once you start hitting like defense three or higher that's not going to do anything correct i think that's there if you pick one of the schools that doesn't have a direct damage spell is something to do in the game yeah um do you want to go through the earth spells stone spikes and earth to mud uh sure yeah, yeah, yeah. um so i'll go through the stone uh stone spikes uh, if target regiment is declared as the target of an enemy regiment's charge action, the charge enemy will uh, suffer minus two the impacts until end, to a minimum of zero until end of turn. Um, this goes into the hedgehog list uh, if you're going to get charges and, and expect things because it reduces impact. It's fine. I think Gilded Legion... Hold on, I'm going to look this up. Gilded yeah. Legion already have, I think, minus three. Oh, they do. Yeah, because the they formation. got... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this would only be good for the other... Uh, porcupine units, or sorry, hedgehog units. No, no, no. Why would it? No, you. It. I. It should combo, so it would be down like minus five. Hold on. Why can't I find Gilded Legion? Oh, they're the first unit. Yeah, they have Pike formation, so it brings down three to a minimum of zero. So it's a. Oh, so this a would, net minus yeah. five. I don't think there's anything in the game that That's gets more than five impact hits. Yeah. But also, then it feels is like... it that? Oh, I guess there's certain like monsters and stuff. Yeah, it just feels like minus it, three is enough. It, it minus three probably is enough, and yeah, it's it's a meme. I don't think you're taking this, but let's talk, yeah. talk about Earth to Mud and see if we take this school. Yep. Yeah. Should the target target regiment wish to declare a charge or march action, it may only do so as its first action. If it takes a charge or march action as its first, it may not take a second march. Uh, so this is something you cast on enemies and try to slow them down. Sixteen inch range is far enough away where non cav. Um, I think you can delay them for a while. Like, I can see this being pretty 
brutal on Dweg because you can like really make them slow. Um, which is good. It's interesting. I just feel there are other schools with other spells, especially with what the chapter mage is going to be attached to that are just uh, are going to outshine this. Yeah. This is a school that I think I see a use case for. Yep. But I'm not sure if it's a particularly notable use case. Correct. Yeah. Like the design space of it's good, which is uh, we're strong like rocks, so don't charge us. And but you other you have other answers for the charges. And I don't want people to get close to me, but like you can always move backwards with range units or something. You, you, do yeah. you know what I mean? Like uh, it's nice yeah. to control the when you get charges and stuff off, but I just feel there's other things that are cooler. Yep. Speaking of which, I'll talk about the water school. Call fog. Self cast three scaling or attunement three, so you need a three or less to cast it. And scaling means you need one additional success yep. per some amount of stands in your unit. Yep. When an enemy regiment volleys against the regiment you cast this on, they have their barrage value. So it's yep. basically build your own obscuring terrain. Yep. Or loose formation, right? Or loose formation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, so this is, it's good. Yeah, right. It, it's, it, it's it wins. Decent. It it um, loose formation is something that's often taken spires with uh, their range units because it helps in the early game when it's like range unit duels. This is enough to get you kind of the winning item, right? Like you getting yeah. half as many but putting full out. That's a recipe for you winning a long match. So, that being said, I think it is a little shine outshined by Ninwa's tears. Target yeah. infantry regiment heals three wounds plus one for if. Plus one for each success if they're an infantry regiment. Yes. So you can heal pretty consistently. Like with Wizard 6, you're probably bringing Focus. So I, you is Focus the one that rerolls two, or is it the one that you count failures as success? Anyways, yeah. I'll we'll talk about we'll look that up when we get to that segment. Yeah. But I feel like you're consistently getting like five to six points of healing, which yeah. is enough to like top up a stand and then bring a stand back with a lot of infantry regiments the yeah. fact that it doesn't work on cavalry is a little sad but i think people were abusing it with ash and dawn oh yeah yeah 100 yes. yeah uh, um, back in the day people used to do that on household knights they would have like their unit of household guard or gilded legion like you would uh seek yeah. new escort into them and then you'd stand eight inches behind the household knights, and then you'd just be healing, yeah. like, eight points a turn. So, like, two full stands a turn. And it was it was uh, abominable. But we've, we've since fixed that with a series of nerfs, and now it's back to reason, but I think that it's really powerful. If you're taking water... If you're a warlord, yeah. you're taking water because you get to heal other units instead of just your own. Correct, you yes. Can, you can do a lot of stuff with that. And I think... This feels like the Hedgehog with, one, right? Where you have big stacks of yes. units, right? Like, Because if you're at MSU and you got, you know, what, 12 wounds or 16, whatever, over over three stands, like, they're probably going to get in a bad place before you can bring them back up, up. But if you have, like, a... If you can take a few hits, like, bouncing them around to that area where it's annoying to kill them, where they got enough stands so they get resolved, so they're taking less damage there. Yep. That feels like what you want to do is keep keep them in the annoying range so that they're hard to remove. Yep. Uh, you want to talk about fire, kindle courage, and fire dart? I was going to jump to just right. because I was going to go through. Seeking winds and guide. Yeah, so, um, so the water had a little bit of range interaction. The main range interaction is with wind. And the reason I, this is important is we talked about chapter mage is often going to be hanging out with uh, mercenary crossbowmen, which are pretty competent or at least point efficient range. So um, the two items that wind gets is uh, seeking winds, which is target regiment adds plus one to their barrage special rule until the end of the turn. So this, it is scaling, but you never run crossbowmen with big blocks, but this helps elevate the barrage. Uh, and I think more importantly is the guide, which is 10-inch, uh, three scaling. Target regiment rerolls failed hit rolls of six during a volley action until the end of the round, especially if they're in that uh, half range where you get the extra barrage by being in half range. Like, you're going to be rolling a good chunk of dice. You're going to hit some sixes, and you're going to be able to convert those over into hits. Um, and that feels very good if you want to go do range interaction, which I think is a little bit more fun because it's damage uh, than, like, a call fog. Um, but the thing is, is that's all you get with this where uh you you have two buffs to a volley and uh once that's done there's there's nothing for you to do with your spells you're back to the the basic uh generic ones that's true yeah it is both buffs for volley and it's weird because 
Yeah, they both offensively buff your own volley. Correct. And there's always probably just like a right one to do. And yeah. yeah. And it's it feels like it's probably It feels like, like it's always plus one to barrage. It it's either plus one barrage or you have such amount of attacks that like the conversion of sixes, right? Which yeah. like you'd have to be in half range, you have to be this. I think ninety percent of the time you're ninety five or more. Uh you're right, plus one barrage. Yeah. And I feel like if you're gonna the, the one thing that helps with the water is you do have the ability to have the incoming damage, so while it's not doing more damage, you're functionally going to be sticking around in a ranged fight. And then you can also pop over and start healing people later game. It just feels more versatile. Yep. So Fire School, Kindle Courage, plus one Resolve, and you are inspired. You gain the Inspired rule until the end of the round, which is slightly different from like Always Inspired, because Inspired, I think... Has it built in that it like falls off after you use it? I, hold on, I'm gonna look this up. There's something weird about the inspired rule itself that makes this a bit more fiddly than I think it's intended to be. Oh, oh, yeah. Until the end of the regiment's activation. Okay, so yeah, I guess that doesn't matter that much, but so you you when you're always inspired, I'm pretty sure it applies in duels, whereas yeah. this. Like, you can't, not that a chapter mage would be dueling. <laughs> Never mind. I'm, I'm going to stop talking about this because it's such a, a nothing. I think, yeah, I think, like, the only thing is, so, to be very direct with it, not some of your units have low resolve, so getting plus one is fine. The, the counts as inspired is only good if you want to, like, move, if you want to do stuff where you're not going to be able to inspire, such as I'm broken, uh, so I'm going to spend my first activation to unbreak and then attack. But like yeah. at that point, you're especially if you're the attached character, just like don't be broken. You can do that. So uh, yeah, it's it's fine. I feel it looks yeah. more interesting than it actually is in practice. Yep. Uh, fire dart, 14 inch range, inflicts one hit per success with armor piercing two. This is your basic damage thing. Yeah. When you combine your barrage and the ability to get a weapon upgrade that we'll talk about, which makes your barrage better, you can become a serious ranged threat. You're never yep. going to cast Kindle Courage. You are always going to cast yep. Fire Dart. Yep. Is is the truth of it. 100%. Speaking of items, let's talk about items because we just talked about the chapter mage, which was the last hero last character so we're not going to go through every item just the ones that are interesting to us and we're going to start with the banners i think you are going to say that you like the standard of steel right i want to break the streak of i was talking about the first one but um we talked about this in other contexts giving dread so the enemy can't ever inspire is like a good ability um and this gives it uh 40 points is a bit high but like there's a lot of stuff you might not want to inspire and uh preventing that seems pretty good uh, especially if you're talking about the hedgehog list where you're going to be stuck in a very long, drawn-out, bat like, a battle. Like, pre like, preventing them from getting better is great. Yeah. So, like, I dread Dread's a good spell. Or, sorry, a good ability. Uh, note that this is a banner, so it can only be taken by an infantry character. You can never Correct. bring this on a household knight. Regalia of the Empire is the banner that I like. It gives Household Guard Regiment specifically yeah. Dauntless, which is always inspired and can't be broken. Which I think is a really good buff. If you're doing the Hedgehog list, I think that you're going to bring one unit of Household Guard with a Noble Lord in it. With the Regalia of Empire. For 25 points, always inspired alone I was inspired is pretty for good 25, at. And also that you never have to spend weird you actions for being broken. You never get broken. Yeah. But duels can still screw up, screw with you. Uh, do you want to talk about any other banners? Do you, do you care about... I, I don't really care about no. either of the other two. No, no, no. Armors. Armor of Dominion. Enemy stands in contact with the character stance. Specifically, lose, cleave, and smite. It can take some of your durable units, like the Household Knights, the Household Guard, and the Gilded Legion, and make them that much more durable. That is going to be insane if your enemy... Granted, it's only enemies in contact, so if they, like, flank you, yes. rear charge you, or, like, are able to hit you at a weird angle, yep. they can minimize how many of their stands are actually in contact with your character stand. Also depends on where your character stand is in relation to the unit. So, like, if, if you're in a unit that's, like, two frontage, then you can basically guarantee that you're going to benefit from it outside of a mm -hmm. flank charge. But as soon as you get to, like, four or five or wider not that anyone would ever go wider than five no, yeah, i think no. 
like that's when you start giving your opponent opportunities to charge in such a way to lose this. For 40 points, you want this to be active as much as possible. Yes. So you're going to take a kind of smaller frontage. Yeah, and this this actually in a, um, a game at Captain Con kind of screwed me. And what I mean oh. by this is um, it is not the unit that you're directly faced against. So I had a three-front unit that charged another three-front unit that had this, and the character was in the middle. Since the, since the middle character touched all three of my units... I lost stuff in all three, right? Because it's in the middle. So, like, if you line up your charges and do things right, like, you can make the whole yeah. front worthless. And then my support attacks, I'm not built for that. So yeah. suddenly I'm attacking at a, a reduction of um, cleave. I think this was uh, my Vanguard, which have, that's like one of their things, right? Um, oh. So, like, I run into things and I'm like, I'm going to chop these guys up. And he's like, uh, actually reduce this. I also, my support actually is going to make this uh, way worse of a matchup for you. And I was like, Oh, I ran the numbers as if it's, like, the first one that touches. But you're right. It's everything that touches it. So that's yeah. three. Uh, so, like you said, two or three wide only, and then put them in the middle, and then just, like, uh, take them down a peg, which is nice. Not that you can bring them in the exact middle three wide, because... Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 To be clear, there are rules in this game, and we have to abide by that. That's true. Sorry, this person, I think, had two or whatever. But it was one of those things yeah. where I did this, and I was like... Crap. Imagine a Siegebreaker Behemoth losing Smite. I did not charge into that with I, with Just, that, but that would have literally made me cry. Sorry, the list I ran was a two Siegebreaker, and then I had a three thing of, of Vanguard or something, and that's what luckily hit it. But like, if that shut down my Vanguard, or sorry, my Siegebreaker, that's the one trick. It doesn't have enough attacks. <laughs> it has no. It doesn't have any other thing. Its trick is Smite. You put yeah. like even the most basic unit next to him, that. That siege break is going to be there the entire game. Like yeah. even like militia with this, I think it would just be like, okay, cool. They're just doing their. They're thing. gone. Do you care about any of the other armors? Because I certainly don't. Uh, no. no All no. right. Weapons. I'm gonna. I have taken the interesting ones. You yes. can. Do you want to talk about a weapon? Is there any that stand out to you? No. I, the one that I think is interesting to me is the one that is you're going to talk about, which is the the range. Hey, I'll Plus. let you talk about it because it's interesting to you. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So. The Kiss Farewell, the character saying gains barrage 3, 18 inch deadly, uh, deadly Shot. Deadly Shot is a very nice skill. That's the one where if they roll 6 to um, defend, they take double, or to double damage. Um, so uh, if this character saying already has a barrage value, it increases by 3, and then they gain Deadly Shot. Um, the range is, uh, is unaffected. So, like, this is how you can kind of build some of your um, uh, characters to be ranged monsters. So uh, seven deadly shot attacks with the chapter mage. And then you can still spell on top of it, which is what's yes. wild. Because yep. it's literally a turret. just kills everything. You can you can cast fire dart and then entourage. Entourage. That's the that's name of the, it. Okay. Uh, go back and delete your comment that you just made. <laughs> entourage. You can then entourage into the mercenary crossbow in the four stands of them that you've joined. And... Then you also get to attack with them, so you're making you know twelve to sixteen attacks depending on range, and then seven or eight deadly shot attacks. No, it doesn't have cleave, but that's still pretty cool. Yeah, and but I think it's fine because the the spell is going to do that. I think yeah. this is really good for thirty points. You're getting a lot yes. of value to, uh, uh, when you're throwing it on chapter mage. I don't think it's really interesting on anyone else. I don't think. Yeah, no. uh, maybe if you're really desperate, you put it on a um, Imperial officer that has joined some mercenary crossbowmen because you've got nothing better to put him in, but you're most likely going to, I think, put him in Gilded Legion. Lorian Lance is a really good 10 points to spend yep. on your Noble Lord. It just buffs his brutal impact. Like we were talking earlier that he's pretty much reliably going to do five-ish points of damage on impact all buffed up with like his supremacy ability and stuff this is kind of you don't want to take the supremacy ability but you still want household knights yeah and you still get like that five damage out because you're still hitting clash four or whatever and re-rolling failed hit rolls and it's also brutal impact three so yep that's pretty good and i'll just say between the armor and the ar uh the the weapons don't take the dual stuff none of the characters are good at dueling it's it's just that's gonna true. be a waste i'm gonna take this one it's my favorite one. Wait, no. Um, sorry, what I want to talk about is later on, so I'll let you also take first grab at the talismans. Uh, 
Where is it? Um, I think the the mantle of Saint Nicholas is good if you're going for the janky build and you give to devote to something that doesn't have it. But I don't think there's any talisman that are really jumping out as super interesting. Imagine Gilded Legion with devout. So once per game they get Deadly Blades and Cleave plus that's, one. That's that's where it's good. But like, yeah. Once again, we're uh. We're piling on to a meme. Correct. That's yeah. the thing. We're, so we're like, going too hard. If on you're going to go into it, it's definitely worth what the ten points. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. If you do that, giving them ten points, good. But like, I don't see a reason you would take it outside of doing something with that mechanic. Eye of Achilles is interesting now with Entourage rules because it gives the character stand a draw event to have all friendly regiments reroll sixes for volleys until end of round. So, like, you can do that and then immediately go into a unit that has a volley attack and gain immediate benefit from it. That feels fine, especially with the Chapter Mage we were talking about. Chapter Mage, can they take two? Um, if you take the Long Lineage Mastery, which I don't think you're doing, but, like... Okay, you could. It just... Yeah. It feels like you would always just take the, the, the one that gives you deadly... Yeah, you, you would. Yeah. You absolutely would. The Eyes 35, too? It's actually five points more? It's... Yes. It's, it's big points. Oliphant's Roar yep. gives Glorious Charge. That gives you plus one Clash and Terrifying on your impact hits when you charge. This is the one, okay, yeah, yeah. This is one that really buffs up the unit of Household Knights. Gets oh, yeah, because you're doing so much and then you yeah. get the... Yeah, 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 okay. That makes sense. Um, Elysian Fragment is my favorite one yes. ever. 20 points... Once per battle, you get smite. So this is with, with the entire regiment that you're joined. You give it to the theist priest. They march their militia up. They pop spirit shines. They charge in. They get the cleave plus one and deadly blades. They do a bunch of damage. You think they're done. The next round, they charge another person immediately after they popped the Elysian fragment. And now, oh, they all have smite. They're actually more dangerous than they just were. Now you get no armor at all. Ever. I hope you brought evasion. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, again, it's just doubling down on the meme. It's you, you get two turns of epicness with your nine stands of militia. Yeah. And then, you know, hopefully you won the game in those two. Yep. Uh, 20 points is also good. Uh, you could put this on other things to have support. I think you'd want support because you want to throw a lot of dice to get that smite to really kick off, right? That's true. Well, to be clear, it is an arcane item, so oh, only an arcane theist, item? priest, and okay, chapter mage can yeah, take them. Okay. So, like, to set that up with any other unit, you'd have to seek escort, and when you're spending, like, you, three You can't do that in 2.0. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right, so it's only the meme yeah. with militia. Or, not even 2.0. Um, that was a fairly recent update, because we made our first video when two, yeah. with 2.1 rules, so this is technically still the same rule set, but there yeah. has been... Some pretty big yeah. changes, like the removal of retinues and seeking yes. escort. So, yeah. So that's good for living the dream and for the meme. Twenty points ain't bad. Yep. I don't like any of the masteries except for tip of the lance, which gives you wedge. Which oh wait, did I just describe glorious charge wrong? Hold on. What does the wedge do? I think it gives you. Okay, wedge gives you. Wedge gives you cleave plus one. This yep. is actually, if you watch, if you didn't watch episode three of the Stoneface King campaign that we've been doing, go watch it. This is about to be spoilers. This mastery that I spent 35 points on is the entire reason why I took a four plus re-rollable charge and threw my game away yep. in, in round three. Because I was like, oh, I really want to get plus one cleave after this charge. I really think that I need the plus one cleave. In that context, I think this is an absolute trap. It makes you do make stupid decisions that don't make any sense. Just focus on your brutal impact, impact attacks that you've buffed up all to heck. You probably don't need to spend 35 points to get cleave plus one when you charge. There's... Some situations where you will, but yeah. like, oh, charging into like a, a pike block formation so you lose a lot of your impact hits, then you need the follow up. But a lot of the time, you're better off just march charging across the field. So, yep. Um, I will say blanket because a lot of these, as I always apply to duels, you do not have dueling characters. So if you go all in on this stuff, you're, you're, you're spending a lot of points to become average. Um, the 
One that is interesting to me, not because I think it's necessarily good, but because it does something that you don't normally see, which is the Art of War, um, where for 30 points, once per round, you can just, when it's your time, you, you can say, I, I don't draw, you go. Um, it gives you a little bit of card screwery instead of just like doing characters. Um, do you get enough value out of it for 30 points? Maybe not. Probably so, not. So let me put it this way. Yeah. Eric Schur yeah. gets two free tactical masteries yes. built into his character. You get to pick them. And I picked Art of War and Rally to me in the, I guess, two missions that we've so far Correct. played with him. How many times have I used either of those abilities? Oh, zero times in both of those games. Because it just, the, the opportunity is, is... to be like, no, nah, I don't draw. Like, either you use it early on and get an extra stall, which maybe, or mid game, like it's too frantic. There's not really that much stalling involved. I think there are cases where, like, you're hundred percent right. In mid to late game, the first like few cards in your deck are hundred percent things that you're hoping to go off and go off well. But I often find in mid to late game that like there's a few things that you want to happen. And there's a bunch of cards that are, like, reactive. Like, these are, like, range units or things you want to move so I can yeah. set stuff up. And this gives them more chance to get them further. Um, yeah. So, like, there's a little bit of value. And, like, if you're playing a list where you're waiting for people to get a little bit closer so you can do the charge. Or you hope to stall them out so their range units, can ha like, either have to move to shoot or they just don't have anything in range. I do agree with you, though, that just like the other items you're talking about, is this can be a trap. Because if you're getting too fancy with stalling things, you're not prioritizing the actions that need to happen at the right time. Uh, but I think there's cases where you, it's different, is why okay. I like it. I have not Fair. seen this one and anything else. And I like... The, the thing I will tell Parabellum, this is me talking to Parabellum, uh, Malfo has a card-based mechanic, and they have a lot of ways to interact with the card deck, and that makes it a very interesting because they use the rules. I think City State's cool because they do a lot of stuff there, and I think this is a good ability because it changes how you interact with your deck, and I think that is an interesting game space because no other game can do that. Yep, and Spires also does that a lot. Watch our Spires video. Yes. Um, Arcane. Focus and Magus are the classic, like, your spellcasters are going to take it because it gives you more Jeez. consistency. Reroll two failed spellcasting die or reduce the number of additional successes due to scaling by one. So I guess you never take Magus because for 30 points, th th double the points and you're just getting two, re re two rerolls. But usually, like, even if it scales, you'll just need one more success and at that point just reroll the two failures, right? Do yeah, you know what I mean? like, exactly. Like, 15 yeah. points, that's way more efficient. Most of the time you are needing threes or fours, so 50 to 66%. And if you fail twice, and yeah. that's going to be like the difference. Most, like, you have yeah. a very good chance of succeeding on at least one more if that's all you need. So, yep, I'm with you. All right, regiment time. Again, just to reiterate, we won't talk about unreleased regiments, which actually there's only two or three of them in the entire faction right which now. Which is good. So, we're we going like. to have to go through a lot together. All right, Imperial Ranger Gore, Core. Yep. Fluid formation and vanguard and a decent barrage attack. I mean, volley three means that they can yep. move and shoot all day. Vanguard means that they come in swiftly. Their lights, their mainstays in the Imperial Officer. Yep. Fluid formation allows you to do some goofy things. I don't think they're good. Uh, I don't think you actually bring them. Yeah, yeah. So they're They do a points. lot of interesting stuff. I don't think you bring them. Correct. Yeah, I just think you're paying for a lot of stuff that other units do for cheaper. They don't have as many tricks. Fluid formation is the only thing that's really interesting for me because you can pivot to start with and maybe get a little extra range that's not really that good don't take them next yep longbowmen they also do something very interesting i don't think people like this unit these days i i haven't seen a list with longbowmen no. in them in a while i do think arcing fire is interesting Correct. but i think that a equitable number of mercenary crossbowmen just straight up is more points efficient Correct, yeah, yeah, and you get a little more because to get, like, the Arcing Fire, you have to stand still. Um, so the 24-inch range is good. The Arm Pierce 1 is good. Shooting over things is good. They have Cleave 1, because, okay, sure. Because um, they're stabbing people in the helmet with their arrows. I like it. It's historical. It's a little flavor piece. I don't think they actually pay points for that Cleave 1. No, 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 yeah, yeah, because they I, want... Um, but 135, the problem is, is the next unit is going to outshine it. I do think the 6-inch extra range and the... Uh, ability when you uh, take aim to arcing is probably interesting. 
It's just fill the table the, with cheaper units. Their biggest problem is that they are only restricted choice. Oh, so you're, they're competing with other stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if, I think, I think if they them. were mainstay, even if you could only take one per warband in specifically Foot Noble Lord or something, I think you would suddenly see units More of, of them. them. Yeah. But, and they do that in other armies where it's like, this is mainstay up to one. Yeah, yeah they should yeah. They should do this because this, this feels like something... Well, not as emblematic as, like, the big units of ranked formation with spears or the horses, but you do feel like the longbowmen feel like they're thematically part of the list. And yeah. it's just, it's not represented on the table. Yep. Mercenary crossbowmen, strongest unit point for point in the game, I think. not Maybe not strongest unit, but, like, strongest ranged unit. I yes. think... I think you easily can take three to four units of just MSUs yeah. of these guys, and 100%. like you would never go wrong with that. Correct. I think that they slot into every list, <laughs> every available mainstay slot that you have. Like, if you want to unlock something, do you take, take mercenary guys. crossbowmen? Yeah. Unless you're specific, like, like if you're taking a, a household, uh, a noble lord, and you want to take household guard. Those are mainstays, so you're not going to take mercenary crossbowmen there. But like, as soon as you're like, oh, what am I going to do with my to unlock the gilded legion? Oh, mercenary crossbowmen. Yeah. I just I want to be clear because people might get twists in what we're saying. We're not saying this is the most powerful unit stand per stand. We're saying per point, you're always yeah. going to get a return on them because they're costed so aggressive. Yeah. Two volley is good. Range eighteen is above average for range. I feel. It has armor, armor piercing. pierce one, which is actually something not a lot of range units get. So, like, you just get a bunch of them. And, like, yeah, against a more expensive range unit, they're probably not going to stand up forever. But, like, you're winning that point-wise, right? If they're shooting that, then other things are getting on yeah. the table. Cavs getting there. Yeah, 100%. You take a lot of these. Yep. Militia. <laughs> I'll let, I've talked a lot here. You, you give the quick version of a couple of these. Okay, yeah. So, um... It's uh, defense one with shield, so it's defense two. It's uh, 95 points, so it's cheap, 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 which is good. Um, the It's just not an exciting unit because it's clashes two. Uh, support two is probably the most interesting part about this, which uh, if you use the real shield, you can get up to three. I think there's a few meme units that you put this in. This goes to this the... This is the theist priest meme. This is meme. the theist priest meme. You take a big stack, you put them in it, you do the things that make this better, then you do the trick with the spell, you do the trick with the legion fragment. Um... Other than that, I don't think people really run them. Maybe you see one. I, I don't know. And, and, and I think you. I think that they have a place. I've seen variants of the hedgehog list where one of their hedgehogs is one of militia. These. Yeah. And to be clear on what a hedgehog list is, it's That's when good. you take. Yeah. We we've referenced it a lot. It's when you take multiple units of like eight to nine stands of gilded legion or household guard, like big big block units. And you use those on the board. I'm not smart enough to tell you, like, how you use them. I can just tell you that the lists often have, like, one Gilded Legion, yeah. two Household Guard. And I have seen variants of the list. And I'm not sure if they're, like, valid variants. But yeah. I've seen variants where it's just, like, here's nine Militia instead of one of the units of Household Guard. Yeah, Militia is But it's still, that... like, three big blocks of guys yeah. with spears. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I think they do that. And I think a lot of people have the models because they've been out for a while. Yep. And you can find them cheap. Yep. I, I'm just going to talk about the, these are, this is the first unit with actual officers. I'm going to talk about them, especially because they're important in the context. Oh, of yeah, the yeah. That's good because this is the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not going to bring them up on screen because it'll have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the document yeah. and then scroll back up. Servite, you add plus one to march and resolve. And also character stands get the bonus to their march. That's pretty good. Moving them up to march six. That's and also better. making them, like... If, if it's Resolve ten, 3 it's, is good because if you attach the Theist Priest to this for the, the meme list, you're, you're Resolve 2. So this bumps you to Resolve 3. And if you run a big block, Resolve 4, which means you can actually stand up because Resolve 2 yeah. is just going to get sneezed at. Yep. Uh, you're paying 15 points. So to make it veteran, you're paying 30 points. And you've got like a March 6 light infantry unit, which... Comes on early, can get pretty far up the board. Combo yep. it with Imperial Officer. I was just going to say that's... They can move up 17 inches turn... 19 inches turn one. Yes. That, that feels, feels like a valid use of 30 points. Then they have Clash 3. Like, no, they're not going to rip stuff up yep. with only Clash 3, 4 attacks. No cleave or anything. Like, this is assuming not Spirit Shines or anything. Yep. Pretty good. Neophyte, 10 points, gives... 
Priest 1 for Interference, which means it's harder to cast against, and Devout, which means that it combos with Spirit Shines. Yep. I do think that the Interference is cool, but you, might. you are probably running it. I don't think you're bringing Neophytes except for to bring Devout in the meme Correct. list because you already get like Interference for the Chapter you, Mage if you Supremacy. Take the, if you want that Chapter Mage, is a better way to get it across your army. Yeah. Order, Errant of the Order of the Shield is my favorite one. The Regiment is always inspired and the Command Stand gets plus two attacks. Okay, so that helps ramp you and up. And also plus yeah. two attacks for a Character Stand when they duel, which makes... You a little bit better bringing you up to six attacks with the Theist Priest when you I do guess the you dual have Quicksilver, meme. so you go first and so. That means that you hit twice with your Clash 2. And if they roll And your Deadly sixes, Blades. Like, that's four. Yeah. That's for It's Hebrew. still my favorite because it's ten points and it's giving you an extra two attacks to your the unit. The two attacks seems really good. An extra two Clash 3 attacks because yeah. you're also making them veterans for 20 points. Yeah. Pretty good deal. Uh, Militia Bowman actually get all of these options as well, so remember that in the context while he talks about them. I don't th devout maybe. Sorry, I I don't see many of these being great on a Militia Bowman. Uh, I guess the movement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just plus say, six okay. inches or plus um, one inch of movement. So Militia Bowman, they are cheaper than the uh, Mercenary Crossbowmen, so like that is a frame of lens to view them. The problem is. Um, their range is less. It's 16 versus, I think, 18. Yep. Uh, it doesn't have armor pierce. Its volley is one as opposed to two. So it's cheaper by 30 points, but you are losing a lot for that 30 points. Yeah, you're losing I, like 50 points of value. Yeah, I, swear I think God. you just pass right over these unless this is the only thing that you can put in there. I, I just, yeah. The problem, like, they're like mainstay unlocks but, for... Noble Lords, yeah, which can let you get a unit of longbows. Yeah, I don't know. You're still you're yeah. you are still bringing mercenary crossbowmen in their place because you it's can't... thirty points more for like honestly like fifty points of value. Correct, because forty things... to fifty points of value is these... too good of a steal. Seventy five points. These guys are pointed so cheap, but they don't do anything. I yeah, just eat, like they, they don't with impact in, board with state. aim state. You hit with a two, right? Like with when Mercs hit three, and then they're hitting fifty percent of the time. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you have to put so much to get something out of these guys. Uh, just do something else. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the way I referred to Hunter Cadre before in the previous video is they are an actual solid melee unit with mercenary crossbowmen on their shoulder. And I think that still rings true, but I also don't think that you bring them in lists. Just because again mercenary crossbowmen you don't need mercenary crossbowmen on their shoulder you just bring mercenary crossbowmen correct and okay. these are also restricted these are restricted they um are light so like they're, they're not going to score so even if you're, they're mixing things up in combat which is the thing these unlock that the mercs don't have you're spending this point for this ability that isn't going to get you a lot i think there's like a world fiend hunter applies to all attacks yep. so i think there's like a world if you get good matchups where you're fighting uh brutes that uh and monsters that fiend hunter puts these guys a little bit above um maybe with like sorcerer kings getting the elephant and a few other things maybe will this will be you know enough there it just feels like i would rather take the 55 point difference between these guys and mercenary crossbowmen and just put that to another stand or another unit of mercenary crossbowmen. yeah that's what it ultimately boils down to uh, i think it's a cool thematic like i like all the rules on it it's just like yeah. I don't think you're going to get use out of them for the extra 55 points. One of the most interesting things you can do with them is bring the Null Mage Officer, which when an enemy spellcaster attempts to cast a spell within 10 inches of the command stand, all of their failures inflict one wound on the caster. That can't be mitigated. That's cool. I which, like, that's a good ability. It, depending on which caster you're specifically dealing with and like what spells that they're working with, you could do a lot of damage. When you're working against like Frost Yatnars and stuff, or Ice Yatnars, this is a cool way of like getting damage on them past their high evasion and their high yeah. defenses. Even even but some dwegs and stuff where like so yes, you have to get there, but there is a world where I have a chapter mage, I have these guys. Someone oh, makes yeah. a mistake and cast a damage spell like a Yatnar in your case. They're getting interference. 
and they're taking a gamble, and it's a real well, gamble. Well, interference only increases the number. Oh, no, wait, that changes the attunement. Never mind, interference is important here. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that could be interesting, but then, yet once again, what do you need to set this up? One of my two warlords is a points. chapter. I need 175 yeah. points. I need that unit to have last and gotten to an area where they're within um, uh, the, the, what, 10 inches or whatever, the enemy caster. Yeah. Which, like, anyone who has a caster who is going to be playing it conservatively or should know enough, right? So it's, like, it's one of those, well, your opponent just has to play bad scenarios. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I am the one who's going to be playing bad in these games. I don't want to depend on the <laughs> yeah. opponent. You want to talk about Mounted Squires? Uh, Mounted Squires, uh, I think the most interesting part about them is, weren't they like originally not a thing and then everyone wanted like more cab and they kind of came into... I don't know if they were... I can't remember if they were part of like the original army list, but they weren't... They were restricted for a long time. Correct. Then they made, made a mastery that would allow you to take them as mainstay and then they just ended up making them mainstay. Yeah, so like it seems cool that it... I like the story of the unit where people was where the Parabell listened and, and gave people more yeah. squires. I think that's more interesting than the unit. So 135 is a cheap amount for Cav. Um, they got nine inch move, which is I think the highest movement in the entire faction. Yep. Uh, which is great. And then combos with one of their abilities. So I am jumping from stats to abilities, which is opportunist, which is you get flurry when you um, flank or uh, charge from the rear. So like these guys point in the army is they want the um, how the household uh, knights or another item to basically hold the enemy and they come in from the side and then just rip stuff up with their flurry um impact one is fine uh not good everything else is better shield one defense two is fine um i think and their their clash and number of attacks is all generic for the things i think like what you're paying for is the ability to project force with nine yeah. And the fact set that... Set reinforcement lines. Set reinforcement lines for the medium troops coming next. And then setting up interesting... If you can get the opportunists, which they had the speed to do, um, getting that flurry is really good. Yep. Also, their Count Palatine officer, they always count as inspired. That extends to the character that's attached. Yeah. Also, it's only 10 points. You can make them veterans for a total of 20 points. So oh. 155 points. You've got 13 oh, and clash here. three inspired that's... attacks that can re-roll with opportunists. Yep. And effectively clash three on your impact hits. It's a decent little package. Yeah. I think you bring one unit of these. Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't I, I think you bring I, one unit veterans, maybe. I think yes on veterans myself. Yes, I think. You bring so. one unit, it unlocks your household knights restricted slot. Correct. And it sets your reinforcement line and it gives you a unit to kind of be really scary in the enemy back lines. Yep. Household guard. They are really basic infantry in my opinion yes cleave support basic number of attacks basic number of wounds basic clash defense three and resolve three makes them pretty good correct yeah like they have solid stats not i think that, that they, they rely cleave. on characters attached to correct. give them additional bonuses mm -hmm. and kind of large numbers and then they also have the arms master yep. which and oh, my, there it is. Uh, yep. Arms Master. The regiment rerolls sixes during clash, and the noble lord attached. If a noble lord is attached, they get plus one characteristic clash characteristic instead. So yeah, it brings you up to clash three. Yeah. It unlocks veterans, so you could be clash four with the noble lord attached. That then makes this a pretty scary stat line. Yes. Four attacks each. The support makes up for it because you're going to go deep. I. I think you're going to bring a, a seven to eight stands and attach a character. You're getting a lot of attacks at Clash 4 plus Inspire to reroll six. Yeah, because you point. do take Veteran on this, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It yeah. isn't a more expensive Veteran choice, but I think it, may, it you need it for the unit to be effective. Like you said, this is a unit that's a very basic frame, and it's like about putting the meat on the meal yeah. to make it useful, uh, to make it satisfying. Yep. Men at Arms is even more of a basic guy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like this, this is for 30 less points, you lose the cleave and the support and the resolve and the defense. You and technically just, keep it with the with the shield, but only from the front and only oh, if they don't the, have line breaker. Yes, you get a conditional and, defense. Yes, but uh, yeah. For 30 points, it feels like the mercenary crossbowman again where you're losing a lot of value. You're, you're losing more than the points that you save in yeah, the regiment actually doing stuff. I like I 
I have a nice place for these because I th think you painted the ones we use in our I, army yeah. very well. So I like looking because I think you did a good job. But sadly, I think us running them is not the right choice because I yeah. think it's... Uh, yeah, so I agree with you. The, you just spend the points at one of the other units like that have more for the bang for the buck. Yep, with 20 points, you can get Seasoned Veteran. With 40 points, you can get that Seasoned Veteran. It gives Bastion, by the way. You can get that and Clash 3. Is it worth it? Maybe. So I'm gonna... Neophyte, Devout, yeah. plays into the meme list, doesn't do anything else, yeah. really. And I'm going to give the Isaac rant so he doesn't always have to. The reason we don't love Bastion is because when you want to use it, you have to make an attack at the top. So the problem is, is it's like if there's a decision where like, I want my men at arm with Bastion to, to live or I can have a game impacting attack over there. You really ought to take the game impacting and not having to sequence to get a plus one defense, which is probably not enough to keep you alive. So that's why we think it's a trap. Household Knights, you want to talk about those? Um, yeah, Household Knights are the standard cav. They're the first cav. I know a lot of people bought into this game and bought into 100 Kingdoms because at the time, I think it was probably the one of the best cav units. I call that out just because I think they are the iconic knight unit you see for this game i think like depending on when you got into the game they were the only correct for a, for a very time. long time yeah <laughs> um, but i know people who bought in just because there was not really a lot of cool cab on the market at the time which is good so i think it's good as an iconic unit um their place is about uh impacts so they have brutal one impact which on impact it ignores one point of armor they have impact of three so that means when you take a big stack you're throwing out a lot of impacts um their defense three is high because they also bring a shield with them. So as we just talked about, uh, anything from the attack uh, front attacks from the front, or if they don't have line breaker, you're functionally four, which is good because they have four wounds. So like they're a durable unit. I think their number of attacks at five is good. So while I, they don't have cleave and stuff, it's it they're doing good, but it's all about that charge. Hold on, I do what you keep talking about like four attacks and four wounds is like good i said you, five attacks five attacks five attacks but you also said four wounds you were like they're very durable because they have four so wounds. you're right so like that's defense defense three <laughs> plus one for shield with a resolve of three in this army makes it they can last a yeah. little bit you're right the big draw of this is to hit with their move seven do a big attack with impact and brutal yeah so that especially when you stack things like where you can stack items that give terrifying and characters that the hit back will not get through your medium cav stats yeah is that a better way of putting it yes okay that's fine it's that's just you the kept better way saying like because average we're, stats you kept saying that's correct. good because <laughs> the last thing we compare like two two units ago we're on militia so you're that's, right okay so fair. you're right yes but I think the goal with these guys is you want to smash something hard. You probably put a little bit more buffs or items or characters here to get that smash to be good. And then the hope is is that there's not enough left of the remaining unit, if it's still there, to be able to take you out. And then you win the attrition war. But these, these, you do not want these guys stuck in combat. Tell me about the tourney champion real quick. Mm. Oh, I thought that you knew off the top. It gives you plus yeah. two inches to your charge. Yes. So... It, it makes it so nine plus d6 you're plus the free reroll from the banner correct in there that's a pretty reliable pretty good charge i mean if someone is 13 inches away from you you'd think hey that's a pretty good i need a four up rerollable that's like a 75 percent chance uh, no one would ever be so stupid as to risk it all on that 25 percent chance would they order of the sealed temple check out mission three of the stone face king <laughs> Order of the Sealed Temple, this is one of your mainstay options yes. for your orders unit. So you take a priori commander. That's the only way to take Order of the Sealed Temple. You have to take a Sealed Temple guy. This is the fluid formation. So they are janky. They are insane. They don't have veterans option, but oh my god, their stats are already fine. Four impact attacks at Clash 3. Not the greatest because they don't have brutal yep. impact, but still... It's a lot. Resolve four, defense four. It's important to note that with fluid formation, they get a little bump in actually getting charges off. Because yeah. that's one of the things is you can start the turn, angle, and then do the charge, and yeah. you get a little bit closer. So it's one of those things they trade off brutal, but they do get a little trick to get a few more inches on charges, which is, I think, good. Yep. The other thing is, is that they are only 190 points. We'll revisit that specific talking point a little later on. Yep. Gilded Legion, your favorite unit. 
I like these guys a lot, uh, and then I put together a bunch of the models, and I uh, um, downgraded from loving them to thinking they're pretty neat, but their models has like nine pieces of They model. are painted well, though. They are painted. I like them, yes. Um, so I know why people don't run them before is because like I could... You want to run these guys in big blocks, and it is technically actually hard to build them because each model is like nine parts. Uh, twelve parts. Twelve parts. Like right. literally twelve to fourteen no, it's parts. 12. It's like... so many. Yeah, because each part is two, and then yeah. So the model looks good, but it takes a bit to put together. It is an older model, so you have to get through that. But what you get on the table is things that I like, especially if you're running the uh, Hedgehog list, uh, which is um, for 155 points or 45 points. It's a heavy unit, so that means um, it's going to be scoring. It's going to be coming late. It's going to be coming late, so you're probably going to want the uh, ability to vanguard these guys up or get them some way up further. Vanguard, five... and you're going to want flank so that Correct. you can bring them in when you want them to, assuming that you have other heavies in the list. If you only have Correct. one heavy in the list, you just use your auto bring on. But Correct. I think that the vanguard's still very helpful. Yeah, exactly, because like, if they come late and they're fives, it's, you, you need them where they're going to impact the battle. Class three, class three is good. Uh, four attacks, four wounds, uh, four resolve. So the resolve is a little bit better. Three defense is fine um, with no evasion. But like, what, the reason you get, you take these guys is they're cleave one, and there hasn't been a ton of cleave one stuff in this list. That's true. They have support two, so they're cleave one, and they're getting a bunch of attacks when they're a big block. And that's kind of these guys' face. You want people to, they, they can take a charge, and they can overwhelm with a lot of attacks. And then uh, they also have... Um, I, if you can look up Iron Discipline... I was just doing it. The pike formation is a You special don't ability. lose support when you're engaged from the sides or rear, and you Correct. do not re-roll successful morale tests. Which is good, because you can chunk them up down the middle, and you're going to hit from anywhere, and you're still going to be fine, so, which yeah. is good. Um, and then they have pike formation, which is when they get charged, they reduce the amount of impact attacks by three. So this unit is already built to take a charge later in the game. Um, it also denies Inspire from which, enemy charges to correct, the front. which is nice. Um, so I like this unit because it does a lot of cool, interesting stuff. With the, the higher resolve, with the iron discipline, I think it sticks around a little bit longer than it seems. Right, because when you take a big unit, you're just like, I need something to stay in front, and then I'm just going to go on the side, and I'm going to be rolling the resolve. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be getting... These guys get around that, and I think that's cool. Um, so I like the unit. I think it does... It's good in that kind of you archetype of You haven't even talked about... The most important part that this is a gentleman's unit. It has two officer choices. Oh, you can yes. take Bastion plus one, or you can play take plus one attack and double time. Plus one attack and double time every, every time. single time. Every time. Because we've talked, he talked yes. about it for me, the Bastion thing. Yes. But it gives you the choice. As I talked about in the Spire video, this is like the customization option. This is yep. the personalizing your force. Yes, you can take the optimal pick, and you can take the Drill Master every single time. But if you want, you can have a little seasoned veteran, and that kind of like tells a little story. It personalizes the force. You're like, I have a defensive-oriented Gilded Legion. Um, they are seasoned. They are veterans. You know, I I want the Bastion one, even if it's not the most optimal pick. Or you can take the much better plus one attack and double time and move up the field real fast. Get extra attacks from the guys yeah. in the front rank, or I guess engaged guys. So yeah, and. 10 points more for these guys compared to Household Guard. However, like, at first you're like, oh, they gain so much value from that. They gain way more than 10 points worth. But then you remember that they're heavy, which makes them a little bit more awkward to, they come to in, work with. Even just one round later can be the impact of the game. That, I think yeah, that's something a lot of people that's the forget. Thing. Um, I think, question for you, with base 3 uh, clash and then the upgrades for more attacks in certain cases... I think these guys still do better with, uh, especially since they get full support um, because Iron Discipline. I think they're better for um, Relentless Drill to go up to, to uh, support three instead of going from three to four uh, clash for double the point of the character. That's probably, that I think is probably true, although I think the rest of the list around the Hedgehog is the opposite. Benefits. It's the be you're right, you're right, yeah. But again, I need to I need to double check because now I'm like realizing I don't actually know off the top of my head whether these Hedgehog lists are taking Relentless Drills or Veterans. Yeah. And my assumption is Veterans, but I could just be very, very baby-brained on that and Blue Shiny, Raw Stat Buff, good. 
I might be overvaluing that stat buff compared to how many points it costs. Correct. And maybe the support is better in Hedgehog List. I think this, it might be, because if you're getting the banner, we talked about with the items, if you're giving the banner in this unit so it's always inspired, it's it's functionally oh, for already. that's true. The re-rolling six is, I think, less interesting than having the support that will always be there with this unit specifically because Iron Discipline. So, like, yeah. this unit, I think it, it kind of breaks away. The other ones, the math might, might show slight advantage but this one it feels like the drill but i think you're right you have to pick it for the army not the unit the next unit we're going to talk about is the steel legion which is my favorite unit i think i have literally 12 stands of them oh yeah you built and i painted but i think we have three uh three more stands that we could build if we want Jeez, yeah, yeah no we've got an insane number of steel legion like i could run the dual imperial officer take five stands with them and yeah. i could even have like an extra msu alongside it i could go crazy with it i don't think i'm going to because yeah. this unit is really good stats bravery and oblivious means like they ignore terrifying and they take yeah. half as much effectively half as much damage from resolve they have five attack space you take the drill master you give them veterans so they're clash four Six attacks each, seven from the command stand. Like an MSU of them is throwing out 19 Clash 4 Cleave 2 cleave attacks. Two. This is like, yeah, Cleave 2. I think this is the first Cleave 2 thing we saw that we've gone through. Yeah. Here, right? Which is, that's that's what they're good at. Yeah, stuff first up. Cleave 2. The only other, like, close to Cleave 2 has been Brutal Impact. Too. Correct. Which is only on the round of charge. Where this guy, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think where they fail is the Defense 3. I think the 50-50 at a basic level, means that these guys fold against pretty much anything yes. that comes at them with cleave. I agree. It, like, cleave one alone is, you're, you're going to run them into these guys, they're going to kill them. Aura of Death is going to annihilate them because it's a 50-50 on each one of those rolls. Anybody with Lethal Demise is going to kill them because it's, again, a 50-50 on all of those Lethal Demise rolls. Like... Defense 3 just does not feel... So... It doesn't feel tough enough for how many points and are restricted and being heavy that they cost. I think the Even heavy... with Oblivious, like, the, Oblivious just does not negate enough damage towards them for me to really say, I'm going to use all 13 of my stands tomorrow. Correct. And these are 20 point more than the Gilded Legion. So yeah. you know the defensive stats are the same there. You are paying 20 points more for this. And then these also have the sufferer where if they get charged from the side, they don't do as well because they don't have iron discipline. If they get a charge against them, they don't have pike formation that's going to prevent that first round damage from killing a bunch of them. So I do agree. I love the stats. Then in practice, I think them coming so late and they're a little bit expensive. Like even mercenary crossbows play really well into these, which is they just get to shoot. Yeah. And it's like, you're only going to make a third of these uh, and, and, they're expensive to be losing. Yep, I agree with you. I love the models. I love, like, the stats. It's just, yeah, making them work, I think, is a challenge. You want to talk about Ash and Dawn? Ash and Dawn is probably the most, like, polarizing unit of this <laughs> of this army. Um, so when it came out, so when it came out, it was in my, uh, this is the, the ice-cold take of the video. That when they first came out, they're under-costered. Um, so they are a heavy cav. Were they out? When our last video came no, out, they weren't out. So. I don't. Oh, think I, so. then I think this is fresh ground we're covering. Oh, yeah, I think we did a, like a points change or something where we referenced them. Oh, but maybe. Um, so they move seven, so that helps offset the fact they're coming later because they have the ability to get up the table. Um, for two fifty points, they are costed high, but for what they get for that is clash four, which is an elite level clash. Um, six attacks, and they are, <laughs> which is which is a lot, uh, and then six wounds, which is which is good defense, especially when combined with its defense four, uh, and blessed. And the reason blessed is important is you can use it offensively, you can use it defensively. It does the thing you need to do. Um, their big uh, design space is the R cleave one, they are, and uh, impact three. So they're just like a very good damage dealing um, unit. Um, they were more expense or less expensive per unit and per stand so they've kind of rebalanced them i still think at their yeah. newer cost they're still very good just because defense four resolve five like sorry resolve five is so good like you it's can, insane i think the resolve five here is way more important than the bravery and the oblivious on the steel legion 
Like, it's the Resolve 5, you're just going to get around so much. Anyway. Well, yeah, but also, look, they're also fearless. They're oh, correct. Just yeah, yeah. like the steel. So, yeah. bravery is you ignore terrifying and fear, fearsome. Yeah. And also auto rally at the beginning of yeah. each of your turns. Fearless is you only ignore fearsome yeah. and So, these guys are just not taking morale But, yeah, damage. they aren't taking morale or, damage. You yeah. have to roll sixes. And they're not taking a lot of actual like damage defense four, either. It's yeah. defense four, and it's defense four straight. And so six it's wounds. the six wounds is so good. And yeah, unconditional defense four. It's not really like high. oh, I got line breaker, I got this, or I'm from the side so remo- No, it's good. So these guys are uh, expensive, but I think they're still like one of the best cav units. They like you haven't seen, They don't do the the first turn charge and then big spike of damage, but like these guys do enough. Sp- uh, impact damage where that's uh, a valid thing to charge. Um, sorry, to move charge. And then when they're stuck in combat, six attacks at Clash 4 with Cleave 1 means they're going to last long. They're, they're going to do well in a stand-up fight. Yeah. So, yep, even a new cost, they're really, really, really good. You want to talk about the last unit of this army list? Uh, or the Crimson Tower? Yep. Yeah, so I will say that we were super hype about these guys when they first came out because they were, like... Cool, cooler Cav than just Household Knights. And then Ash and Dawn kind of came out, and I think everyone just kind of moved past Crimson Tower. Um, so 200 points. Uh, it is heavy, so it's coming late, but it's got the 7 ish move. Um, only three Clash. Uh, sorry, for the extra 50 points, the Ash and Dawn have one extra, uh, one extra Clash. These guys are three. One extra attack on the Ash and Dawn versus these guys, five. One extra wound. And you're going through here, and you're like, Brandon, you're saying all the things that, as compared to Ash and Dawn, because I think for 50 points, you just get the Ash and Dawn. That's the problem with these guys. Well, but these guys are mainstay. Ash and Dawn. Oh, these guys are mainstay. These guys okay. unlock the, the Ash and Dawn. Dawn. Okay. Yeah, that I don't think I don't think it's a valid comparison. Okay, fair. Um, so these guys are good heavy cav. They got good stats. Shock cav. Shock cav. Yeah. I would say I don't think that they're good heavy cav because heavy oh. cav to me implies Ash and Dawn are heavy. I would even say that they're super heavy cap because yes. they get stuck in and they actually fight. Because it's the cleave and the six attack that keep yes. going. Where these guys... These guys charge... They they rely on the charge between Wedge... Well, brutal. no. Wedge is the one that gives them plus one cleave after they charge. So Correct. The, but still, they still rely on that charge. So they are shocked. They live and die two. on the charge. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, they're you good. You them for the other things. I, but here's the problem... Sealed Temple are medium. So they're gonna and in the army where and they're ten Ash, points less. And they also unlock Ash and Dawn, right? Yes. So you're so when we're building an army, let's think about army comp. If we go with the Crimson Tower, I'm taking a turn three act, uh care um unit to unlock my turn sorry, I'm taking a heavy cab unit that's gonna come on turn three earliest. And it's gonna be competing to come on at the same time my Heavy, my, my yeah. Ash and Dawn is where there's a better sequencing with the other item, which is turn two, I bring on uh, my medium cab. Turn three, I bring on my Ash and cab. And then you have a one two punch. That's way, yeah, yeah. These guys are comp- the heavy. I'm doing. They have heavy stats, but I do agree. Yeah, that's. I'm feels doing like they're a fighting. quick experiment here. Yeah. I, I like them in concept. I just feel there's a lot of other items in the item. I, I'm looking at the. The other order unit, I think you're right. You're not... I don't think you're right. You are right. They're also so... Moving, they're moving eight, so they're coming in, and they got the janky fluid. Ha! <laughs> Insane. All right. Yeah, the Sealed Temple also are way better at, at playing objective games because their mediums are coming in earlier. Fluid formation, so they can, like, yeah. do the tilt. Yeah. Yes. I think the problem is, is you can't win... Most missions, you can't win just by killing the enemy. You need to play the objectives, and if you're all heavy, you're coming too late to score. You're giving up a lot of points, I will say. Um, and having tricks like fluid formation often is, in my opinion, um, the difference of who can win or not. Like, it's the people doing the fun tricks to get two or three extra points a few turns in a row. Yep. Um, so I just did a little thought experiment. I made a list that was just two priority commanders and four Ash and Dawn. So when you take Order of the Sealed Temple, you take four units of them, you have 20 points left over. So it's yep. literally four sealed, two priority commanders of yep. the Sealed Temple Four units of MSU Sealed Temple, four units of MSU Ash and Dawn. I don't think this is a good list, but... It's just you, illustrating. It's 20 points under, which means that you could boost two of those uh, Sealed Temple into Crimson Towers, and then you'd have 
two Sealed Temple, two Crimson Towers, and four Ash and Dawn. I don't think that would be that good of a list. Yeah. I think that would be worse. But this demonstrates that you can't bring like a full orders list yeah. with only Crimson Tower. Um, if you look at it just from the perspective of like what's that one war band look like, it's 990 points versus 1,010 points, which is not that big of a difference, but that's banners, that's veterans on other units. Yeah. I, 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 I also think that you're more likely bringing one unit of Sealed Temple and five Ash and Dawn. Five stands. Five stands of yeah. Ash and Dawn. Yeah. At which point... Then the, the the ten point difference doesn't matter, but where it really comes into play is the medium status. I, I lied earlier when I like alluded. I was like, "Oh, we'll talk more about that later." I thought that it was more like a twenty or thirty point difference between the unit, and I must be thinking of an older version. Yeah. None of these are magenta, so like it wasn't a recent rules change. But like looking at it, I'm pretty sure there was some point in time where sealed temple were like one seventy points. <laughs> And that is cheap enough to matter. So I'm sorry for the for, for basically lying about how interesting this was going to be for me to bring up later. Yeah, I still think the conversation of them being medium and flu formation oh, is way better. That's why you take them 100% yeah. of the time. Because they're going to come in. The fact that you have a, a movement, what, they're uh, eight on turn two means they're going to be able to, like, imagine a world where you take... Their movements... Oh, you, are they movement eight? The Hold Order on. of the Sealed Temple? Yeah, they yeah, are ruminate. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. so All right. imagine a world where the first turn you push up a bunch of your your uh, cross well, mercenary second. crossbow oh, men. I see where you're going. And with you this. might be I like, the oh man, they might get get chopped up. Yeah, come here. I'm gonna sit and shoot you. You go kill those guys because right behind them is a bunch of sealed temple that are they're pivoting and doing all sorts of movement janks to get uh, the charges off, right? Like, and then what's behind them? Oh, that was the Ash and Dawn, right? Like, that feels like a very good sequence where it'd be bad if you're like, oh, my mercenary crossbows are up at. Okay, uh, I need to keep moving them back because I got to seed the table because I got to wait for my heavy units to come in and do something. Yeah. And you're yeah. giving too much tempo. And this is a longer video because 100 Kingdoms is already a large army. It's mostly complete. We only yep. skipped a couple units, but it has been requested before that we talk about like lists. A little bit yes. at the end of these videos to kind yep. of bring it all together and i'm basically going to be reiterating points uh that we've made earlier but i'm yep. broadly speaking you start with like three msus of mercenary crossbowmen yeah and then from there you either go with like a big unit of noble or mm -hmm. household knights or you go with like two units of household guard and a gilded legion mm -hmm. so this is like your choice or you go with a priori commander warband to finish mm -hmm. out the list. I think yep. no matter what, I think that if you start with three regiments of mercenary crossbowmen yep. and then kind of decide, am I going with super heavy cavalry? Yep. Am I going with the household knights? Or am I going with like a foot list? Yep. And keep, um, keep the mercenary crossbows cheap. I wouldn't put a... I wouldn't prioritize putting standards on them. I know that one inch move in the beginning might matter a little bit, but I feel like you you It's want... only five points. Oh, it's only five? Actually, never mind. It's five only points. five I, th I was running points. as ten. Um, never take more than three stand. Uh, sorry, four stands, but I think you want to run a lot of MSUs so you get the board coverage because 18-inch uh, range is, is good. Um, but yeah, I think the decision is do you go heavy on the infantry and then build the uh, hedgehog list with the household guards, the gilded legion, uh, and go that way. Or do you go with a priority ca commander and then get the um, uh, sealed temple with the Ash and Dawn? I think the horse lists are generally more popular, A, because they're easier to transport, and B, like, when most of your army is defense four, even if conditionally, yep. and move seven, it's very easy to recover from mistakes. Like, Correct. Yep. Yeah, I, I also think that's one of the things when you think across all modern war games at the moment who are fantasy aesthetics, so we're talking about Age of Sigmar, uh, Mantic, Old World. Um, there's not a lot of games where you can just run a bunch of horsies, and these are good horsies. I think like yeah. I think it's a good like even without the mechanics, I think people are drawn to it because it looks cool and there's not a lot like it. And I think that's great that that Conquest offers that, and I think it's good that you can build a mechanically sound list with squires, household knights. And then the, the different orders, depending on what you want to do, even though we have our opinions. Yeah. I think that's cool. So, yeah, that was our second edition. 
that implies that this is like the second this is talking about the 2.0 list but th this is 100 kingdoms hot takes part two version two v2 the updated version we'll make another one next year you know we'll just keep farming this one out <laughs> we'll <laughs> as we keep playing like yeah. i think there was some influence from uh playing some games where we thought things were really cool and then we ran it like men at arms uh so i think we yeah. there's, there's a little bit more uh intelligence here from actual uh on game practice and uh a lot more stuff here. So if you like this content, like, follow, subscribe, comment. We always like seeing comments. And um, uh, tune in for our Stone Face King campaign, where episode three should be already out by the time you watch this. Yeah. And episode four should be coming out soon yep. if you're watching this when this releases. Cool. So, hey, as we always say, we are friends forever. Catch you on the next one.